log 6, log 2, and log 3, uh, I put them in that order because I want us to look at them from the perspective of how can we combine 6 and 2 and get 3. How can we combine 6 and 2 and get 3? By dividing, okay? 6 divided by 2 is 3. So can we combine these two numbers, 0.778 and 0 0.301, to get 0.477? We could subtract them, right? Because if we add the 0.477 and the 0.301 and get 0.778, but if we do 0.778 minus 0.301, that's going to give us the 4, the 0.477. So here's our last property. If we are subtracting two logarithms, then that can be expressed as the log of the quotient. Okay? When you're subtracting, it's the log of the quotient, and you do it in order. Okay? If A comes first, then A is the number on the top. So let's start with expanding a few of these. Log of x over y would be equal to the log of x minus the log of y. The log of 7 over 6 would be the log of 7 minus the log of 6. Log base 2 of 11 over 3 would be log base 2 of 11 minus log base 2 of 3. And log base 5 of a over b would be log base 5 of a minus the log base 5 of b. So vice versa, if we're going to condense, if we're going to put them together, log of u minus the log of v would be the log of u over v. Log of 8 minus the log of 3 would be the log of 8 over 3. And if you can simplify those numbers, you're more than welcome to do so. Log base 2 of 6 minus log base 2 of 11. Log base 2 of 6 over 11. And log base 9 of x minus log base 9 of y would be the log base 9 of x over y. A lot of times with the quotients, uh, they don't necessarily put parentheses around them because that one's pretty obvious uh, that all of that should be inside the log. It's more when you're multiplying that they put parentheses around to make sure that you know all of this is inside the logarithm or this is not inside the logarithm. Okay? So here, if we have log base 7 of a, b to the 4 to the 4, um, what I would do first with this is I would apply that fourth power inside my parentheses here. So that's log base 7 of a to the fourth. When we raise a power to a power, what do we do? Multiply. Okay, so that's b to the 16th. It's not b to the 8th, it's b to the 16th. Power to a power, you multiply. And then we're multiplying those two numbers so we can expand that into the sum. And then the last step, we're going to use our power property and we're going to move those exponents in front of the logarithms. So that's put me, we're using some exponent rules, then we're using our product property and our power property as well. Okay, log base 4 of x to the 5th divided by y to the 5th. We're dividing, so we can expand that to be the difference. And then we need to use our power property to move those exponents and make them coefficients. Okay, 
Let's look at condensing with multiple properties. Okay. Before we can put those two together, we have to move the coefficients. Okay. Coefficients have to move first. So the 6 goes, uh, becomes an exponent on the u and the 5 becomes an exponent on the v. And then we're subtracting, so that becomes a single logarithm, and we divide u to the 6 over v to the 5th. Okay. So again, before you can... Uh, combine them into a single logarithm. Any coefficients have to become exponents. So that's log base 5 of a to the 24th plus log base 5 of b to the 6th. We're adding those logarithms. So it's a single log of the product. a to the 24th, b to the 6th. So they're kind of boring by themselves, but then you have to be careful if you start combining them. Okay. So these first two examples are pretty easy. Okay. These are kind of like those exponential problems. When we had the same base on both sides, the only way that equation was going to work out is if the exponents were equal to each other. Well, look at this first example. We've got log base 19 on the right side, log base 19 on the left side. The only way that this equation is going to be true is if what's inside the logarithm on each side is equal to each other. So that's all you got to do is all you have to do is set 1 minus r equal to negative 2r minus 8 and solve it. So I'm going to start by adding 2r to both sides. That gives me 1 plus r is equal to negative 8. Subtract 1. r is equal to negative 9 and you should always plug it back in to make sure that you don't get a negative number okay uh, 1 minus negative 9 we're good that gives us 10 negative 2 times negative 9 minus 8 that gives us 10 so we're okay r equals negative 9 is our solution okay B is a similar thing, okay? Log base 2 on both sides, we set what's inside the logarithm equal to the other side. This is a quadratic, okay? We've got x squared, so everything has to be on one side. So I'm going to subtract the 8 and the 2x squared, so I've got 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 8. That factors into x plus 4 times x minus 2. So we get negative 4 and positive 2 as our answers. And I think both of those are okay. When we plug them back in, um, we're still going to end up with, we're not going to end up with any negatives. So we have two solutions to this logarithmic equation. Now, really quickly, what happens if we don't have a log on both sides? Well, we're going to handle it the way we did with the other exponential equations. We're going to get this equal to 0, and we're going to graph it. So we're going to add 6 to both sides. So we've got 12 minus 4 log base 12 of 9x plus 6 is equal to 0. And we'll pick up tomorrow with how to type that into our calculator.